In this video, I'm going to show you how to create fully functional mobile keyboard inside of Figma that is going to appear on the screen when the user click and detects input, and then the user can use this keyboard to write down something in that input field. So get sure to watch this video until the end. My name is Kia, and here is a chemo. Welcome back to my channel. this video I would like to mention one point. The idea of this video is coming from your side. I ask you before to write down your ideas, problems in the comment section that I can see which kind of content you would like to see in the next videos. A while ago I published a video in which I explained how we can create fully functional text input inside of Figma that the user can write down some text inside it using the physical keyboard. And then I got this comment in which someone asked me to show how we can bring the same logic and functionality inside the mobile prototype. And that's why I decided to make this video. So get sure to share your ideas and problems right now with me in the comment section before you forget it. I'm gonna pin the most interesting one or the one that the everyone like it in the comment section and then try to work on them for the next videos. Now without further ado, let's get it started. So we need to prepare the user interface elements that we are going to work on them in this video. In order to keep the video short, I'm not gonna focus on how to design these elements. Instead of that, I'm going to find some prepared pet design from the Figma community. So let's open the Figma community and then search for our first element, which is going to be the iPhone or iOS keyboard. Here in my case, I'm going to use this one, which has been done by Oscar. I only need to click on the open in Figma button in order to open this file inside the Figma. In the next step, I'm gonna find the most proper component for me in this video, which is going to be the iPhone 13 keyboard and the dark version. I'm gonna select this component and then use the combination key control C and then get back to my own design file and then use the combination key control V to paste that component inside my own file. Whenever I copy and paste some component from another file, I usually want to get sure that there is no dependency between this component and another component from another file. So I need to get sure either the master component is existing in my own file as well, or I need to deattach all the instances from their own master component. In my case here, the keyboard component is Itself is the master component, so we are fine there. But when I click inside this component and select the bottom of the keyboard, I realize the master component is not here. So I'm going to select the whole keyboard and click on the enter. In this way, I can select all the child component or element inside the parent component, which are going to be the keys, and then use the combination key Control alt b or search for the attaching all the instances. This trick will help you to deattach all the selected instances from their own master component. I get back another time to the Figma community and this time search for the text input. In this video, I'm gonna use this template that has been done by Kevin Kwa. You can find the link to these two Figma files inside the Figma community in the description of my video. Okay, now it's time to work on the functionality of our keyboard. But before doing anything, I need a variable that I can save the value that the user enter inside the text input. So let's open the local variables panel and then I create a new variable which the type is going to be the text or a string. I rename this variable to txt-input and as the initial value for this variable, I'm going to select right here. Okay, now that we have the variable, it's time to work on the interaction itself. In another word, we need to define what will happen if the user click on one of the keys of the keyboard. I'm gonna select one of the keys of the keyboard. I'm gonna start from the left top, which is going to be the Q. Then I'm gonna open the prototype panel and then create my new interaction. I'm gonna set the trigger of this interaction on click and then I'm gonna use the conditional in order to be able to kind of use or make a more complex logic here. And the logic of my conditional is going to be like this. If the value of the text input variable is equal with the right here, then set the value of the text input variable to Q. And in the else section, we say set the value of the text input variable to text input variable plus Q. In the first part of this condition, actually, we define if the text input field is in the initial state, which means that the variable that we define has the initial value, then we need to remove all the value that it has and then add the alphabet that the user clicked on it. In this case, it was Q. In the second part of the condition, we say if the text input is not in the initial state and the default state, which means user has already entered some text inside it, then we add the alphabet that the user clicked as a new character to the rest of the string. Okay, now our interaction is ready. 
Actually, we can follow the same process for the rest of the keys of the keyboard and create the same interaction. This will take you a little bit of time, but also there is another way. We can duplicate or copy paste uh, this interaction using the combination key Control C and then select the new element or the next element. In my case here is going to be the key W and then paste that interaction on it using the combination key Control V. Now I have the same interaction on my new element and I don't have to kind of do the same stuff that I've done before again and again. The only thing I need to do is to change the letter Q in my conditional to letter W, which is representing the exact alphabet that exists on my key. So I'm going to follow the same process for the rest of the keys of the keyboard. But I would like to mention one point here. To create the functionality of some of the keys of the keyboard, such as the backspace, we might have some difficulties. As you could see, we have this set variable as a type of interaction in our prototyping panel, which let us to manipulate the value of a specific variable. In our case, we were able to add one character to our string using this feature. But at this very moment, there is no possibility to remove only one character from our string variable. And to be honest, I don't have any solution for that also. So if you know something, if you have a new method or you think that you have a solution, please share your opinion inside the comment section with the rest of the people that everyone can learn that as well. Now I'm going to get back to the text input component that we already have in our design file. In this step, I need to connect the value of the text layer, which is inside the text input to the variable that we made. So I'm going to select this layer and then here from the text properties panel, I'm going to click on this icon here and then select the variable that we would like to connect to this text layer. Now I'm going to make a new frame inside the demo page of my design file and then add one instance of the text input field inside this frame. Then I'm going to select this text input and then go to the prototyping panel and create a new interaction. I set the trigger of this interaction on tap and the interaction type an open overlay. Here I need to select the frame that I would like to use as an overlay. In this case, it's going to be the keyboard. I set the animation type on moving and then animation direction from button to up. From the overlay setting for the position of the overlay, I set the positioning of the overlay on custom and then manually position the keyboard in the place that I would like to see in the frame. I also check on this uh, checkbox which says close when clicking outside, which means whenever the user click on somewhere on the screen, the keyboard is going to be disappear. Now I'm going to run the prototype and as you can see, when the user click on the text input, uh, the keyboard is going to be appeared and the user can use this keyboard to write down something inside the text input. I had another question in the comment section in the previous video that I made in which someone was asking me what if we want to have more than one text input. So let's copy paste the text input that we have in the frame and this time I rename it to the family name. Now I'm going to open the local variables panel again and then create a new mode for this variable. I rename the new mode to the family name. Now I'm going to select the second text input that we made. And then from the layer visibility properties panel, I'm going to click on this icon and then set the mode to the family name. I do the same thing for the first text input, which was for the name. So I'm selecting it. And then from the same menu, I'm going to select this time the name as a mode. I need to do the same thing for the keyboard, which means I'm going to duplicate the keyboard and then set the mode for one keyboard and the name. And then for the second one and the family name. Now I'm going to select the family name text input and then go to the prototyping panel. As you remember, when we duplicate this element from the first text input that we had, we already made one interaction for it. The only thing that we need to do here is to just connect this interaction from the text input family name to the second keyboard, which has the same mode. And then get short for the name text input, this interaction is connected to the first keyboard. Now we can run the prototype and we can see that the text inputs are working very well. So this is how we can make more than one text input which are working and they are functional inside our prototype. So that was it for this video. I hope you learned something new and it was so. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and share your opinions and feedback in the comment section as well. Help me to improve the contents and the videos that I'm publishing in this channel. In addition, I will publish this Figma file inside the community that you can have access to it. And if you want to practice, you have this chance to do it on the real file. You can find the link to this Figma file in the description. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.